Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. So we have some friends online um, and in the room with us. Please give us a, a moment just to give us some grace as we're kind of navigating um, the hybrid. There's a new computer here in the library, so we're learning some new things for tonight. Um, as we go through our session, we do ask that you all remain um, muted because we are recording the session. We will be able to have some time for Q&A afterwards when we stop the recording. Um, and then you can unmute, come off camera, whatever may feel natural for you. If you have questions that come up as we're discussing um, or, or anything that might feel heavy to you, if you need to take a step away, please feel free to do so. Or you can also just put the information that you may need in the chat. Uh, please just remember that um, we are in a shared space um, with our community. So if it's something that you need to address more privately, just send a message if you need an email. Um, or if it's something that you need to connect on further so we can do that um, and try to keep some confidentiality for you all. So with that session today, we're focusing on helping your child save a life, which is a parent training that's going to be focusing in on our signs of suicide. And we have the amazing Amy Johnson here with us to get us started. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for the introduction. And I'm just going to make sure. There we go. Alexis, I'm having trouble. There we go. Now I went too far. So thank you, Alexis, for the introduction. We are so glad that you all are joining us in person as well as virtually. My name is Amy Johnson. I'm the School Mental Health Clinical Supervisor, and I am here with a team of folks that really help deliver the signs of suicide lessons um, in our school. So you'll hear from Nicole Scalia, our secondary school counseling specialist, Mark Brandenberger, who is our health, P health physical education and uh, driver driver's education specialist. And then we also have a licensed clinical social worker, Caitlin Priest, here from Henrico Area Mental Health and Developmental Services. So as with anything, we want to make sure that we're kind of showing the alignment and the connection to our strategic plan, which is Destination 2025, and how we really work to foster an inclusive, safe, and supportive climate for our all stakeholders. And that objective is really making sure that we have met our students' social and emotional needs. So before we begin our session tonight, we'd like to acknowledge that talking about suicide can be challenging and a heavy topic for everyone. So please make sure to take care of yourselves during our time together, as well as after the session concludes. If at any time you begin to feel overwhelmed or upset by the content, please feel free to step away for the session for a bit. We wanna share uh, two national resources that are always available, and those are the Suicide Prevention Lifeline and the Crisis Text Line. Also, local resources are available to you as well. As you all heard in Alexis's introduction, we are lucky to have a representative here from Henrico Mental Health, Caitlin Priest. So please feel free to stay on after this call if you'd like the opportunity to debrief or decompress. Also, one final thing before we get started, due to the sensitive subject and being aware that many of you are at home or where other ears are around, Please take the time to adjust, maybe get headphones or move to a private space. I'd like to share just a brief overview of our time together. We're gonna review suicide prevention basics, then move into an overview of the signs of suicide curriculum, which will include reviewing the acronym ACT and what that means and what to do if your child expresses thoughts of suicide of their own or regarding a friend. Then our health and PE specialist will provide an overview of what the SOS looks look like within the classroom. So hearing how the lesson is delivered and also how it ties into the existing health and wellness curriculum. We'll then discuss coping skills and ways to build our coping skills. And then we'll conclude with a community resource share out. At that time, we will end our recording so that we may take questions from the audience. So when we think about why suicide happens, there's multiple contributing factors. Of course, this list here is not inclusive of all factors. However, many times it really boils down to trying to stop the intense emotional pain that someone may be experiencing. With any of these factors, we want you all to know there is help and support available. Please do not think that you have to do this alone. 
It can be very difficult experience to help someone that you love and care about when they're struggling with these feelings and emotions. So some of the factors that can contribute to this pain are untreated depression, so the majority of people who die by suicide have a mental health disorder, most commonly depression. These mental health conditions are treatable, but many young people struggle with getting help. When depression goes untreated, a young person may begin to feel so hopeless that they consider suicide. It may seem like the only way not to experience these intense feelings. One of the signs of depression can be isolating or withdrawing from peers and or family. So be aware if you, begin to know, if you begin to notice this taking place with your child. Drinking or drug use. So many young people who struggle with depression also struggle with alcohol and or drug use. Substances you can, substance use can be a form of escape from the pain. It's a temporary escape and which we all know can lead to additional troubles, but again, it can be used as, a, as an escape. Be sure to talk to your child about the dangers of using alcohol, drugs, or substances in general to cope with these negative emotions. If you are aware that your child is using substances, again, please seek support. Access to guns. Suicide crises are often short-term, but having access to a gun makes it easier to carry out in an instant. Many people keep unlocked guns in their home, making them easy to get, quick and deadly for any young person. Reduce suicide risk by keeping your gun locked, unloaded, and or making sure that we're storing ammunition separately. Thoughts of suicide. So when someone has thoughts of suicide, it does not necessarily mean they want to die. Instead, the person is trying to solve the problem of the intense emotional pain and hopelessness. People generally don't want to die. They want the pain to stop. So again, make sure that um, you're seeking support from a professional. So there are many areas where we can intervene before someone reaches the point of considering suicide. When young people get treatment for depression or substance use, they can begin to feel much better and that sense of hope begins to return. Developing coping skills as well as, as building connections with peers and adults can buffer young people during difficult times. We call these things protective factors. Protective factors are things that help us mitigate or reduce risk while also building and increasing the health and well being of our youth. So, all of you just being here present with us tonight, engaging in this really difficult topic, allows us to become a protective factor for a young person. Your help and support are so important and essential. So, now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Mark to discuss how this topic connects with the work that his team and Health and PE are providing. Thank you, Amy. I'll allow you to adjust a moment to my PE voice. Um, I'm here representing the 180 Health and PE teachers across Henrico County that every day spend time creating relationships with your students on a variety of sensitive topics. Um, the it, this allows us to have an opportunity to talk about truths and to talk about individual cases and um, with a variety of topics, whether it be alcohol, tobacco, drug use, uh, but more specifically leading up to these lessons, uh, both our middle school and high school students are engaged in lessons about stress, anxiety, team depression, time management that can be uh, some of the cause and uh, a, a strong um, will to achieve in school. So there are a lot of factors weighing on our young people. Um, and so our first task is to talk about those openly and have students identify uh, the risk factors in their own lives that can cause them to feel alone, overwhelmed, um, without a sense of hope. And so that allows us to create those relationships prior to these lessons so that as we're learning more about how to uh, recognize the red flags in relationships with our friends, the red flags in ourselves to look for, the students are able to either advocate for themselves or for a classmate. And we're gonna talk about more about that a little bit later, um, but we're really helping identify when is a time when I become worried that I should share that with someone else. Uh, and that worry should be taking our students to the trusted adults in their lives, which will more than likely include school personnel. 
uh, while our health and PE teachers will not have all the answers, they will have access to the resources. And so we're, we're encouraging any and all students to begin that dialogue and to really take a close look at themselves as we learn these topics, but also to look out for each other because they're more likely going to be able to raise a flag for us and someone that has not yet self advocated. Um, and so we look forward to those, those opportunities uh, to provide early intervention for the students that need it. Um, Nicole is going to talk more about the the actual SOS lessons that occur with our students in conjunction with health and PE teachers and uh, school counselors and school wellness teams. Um, and so so thank you. And then I'll come back and talk a little bit more about next steps with students. Right, so in the schools this fall, the um, first semester, um, our school based mental health team, uh, which is made up of our school counselors, our school psychologists, our school social workers, they will be presenting the signs of suicide lessons to your students um, in health and PE 10 um, as a supportive approach to, to share information and prevent um, suicide. So we're going to share um, how students can help one another by, again, um, as Mr. Brandenberger said, um, sharing that information with an adult so that we don't have the pressure on the student for feeling that they need to heal their friend, but instead relay that information to an adult. Um, so our jobs are to act, which means acknowledge a problem, care enough to tell a trusted adult that they can get their friend help. Um, and our team's focus is for students to help a friend by not keeping their secret and telling an adult when they think a friend will not ask for help themselves. So that is the main goal is to be able to provide them the signs that they should recognize within their peers and their friends and be able to relay that information to a trusted adult. So just as Nicole shared, when your child receives their SOS lesson, they'll watch three video clips and engage in class discussion to learn the ACT acronym, which again is Acknowledge, Care, and Tell. At the conclusion of the student lesson, it's the team's goal to host a debriefing session in order for students to smoothly transition into their next class. We understand this can be a difficult topic for our students, so we want to ensure that we can hold some time at the end of each lesson to support them. And in addition, at the conclusion of the lesson, students can then request support from an adult. So every student will be given a request to speak to an adult slip, or maybe it's done online, but each student is provided that opportunity. Parents and guardians are an important part of this message as trusted adults in their children's lives. So you may find that your child will request to talk to you about concerns for themselves or maybe a friend. So next, we're going to walk through each step of ACT. So let's review some of the warning signs that someone may be thinking about suicide, because many times people will give clues that they're thinking about suicide. So you may see anger. This could be new or a change in existing anger. Changes in behavior in general can be a warning sign. For example, if you have a typically outgoing child and they start to withdraw, this could be a clue expressing a sense of hopelessness, despair, or overwhelming pain. Maybe they start sleeping more or they're sleeping less. Um, disrupted sleep patterns in general could be a warning sign. So engaging in substance use, again, like we discussed earlier, this could be a way for them to escape pain. So it should really be viewed as a clue for help. And some young people may begin to talk about suicide or use language that could include that they are thinking about suicide. Again, this list here is not all inclusive of all of the warning signs. However, these are signs that students are learning to identify through the video clips and discussion in the classroom. So it's really important for us to share this with parents and guardians as well. So within their lesson, students are learning about the power of listening to their friends, showing they care, and then what we do is we encourage the students to practice active listening when they are concerned about a friend. So students can use a few simple phrases, just like, I'm, I'm here for you, I care about you, I'm worried about you, to show they care, and then they just listen. And the next step is really the most important step, and that's where we are asking them. It's SOS encourages our students to reach out and tell a trusted adult. 
we are encouraging our students to think about the adults in their school as well as outside of school that they can turn to in these times of distress. We don't want them to think that they have to act alone. We also don't want them to think that they have to keep this information a secret. In some cases, this could literally be a matter of life and death. So we want them to know that they need to rely on the support of our trusted adults. And I'm gonna transition back um, to Mark. Thank you. Um, after the SOS lesson, your student may want to talk uh, to an adult, a teacher, a friend uh, about themselves or a friend. Uh, they, they may bring this information to you. You as a parent or guardian might be the trusted adult that the child's for a child's friend as well. Um, so do not be surprised if neighbors or uh, peers come to you with, with concerns or questions. If a child is concerned about a friend, us as parents should listen to the child's concerns and encourage them to seek help. Contact the friend's parents directly and share your child's concerns. Contact the school mental health staff or administrator so they can support the child or family. If they are concerned about a child's immediate safety, call 911 immediately uh, for assistance. We want to reassure the child that they did the right thing in coming to us, whether it's our child or another child that is bringing information to us. Um, and this will help us all work together to save a life. Scrolling down. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we do uh, as parents is to help our children build coping skills. We want to encourage parents uh, to explore the things that do make students and, and teenagers happy about being themselves. Um, are we off by one? Yep. Okay, bless you. Thank you. We were. All right. Um, the, uh, this is something that we do in identification through personal survey with students, finding out where their interests are, um, and getting them involved in those things outside of school. Uh, but inside a home, that may include things like playing or snuggling with the family pet. It may be escaping uh, into a good book or TV series. Uh, the things that make them feel good about being themselves, make them feel grounded and happy um, and involved. And then some of uh, students will wish to get competitive in sports or games and find things that, that give them a sense of purpose and competition. Um, volunteering is another one of those things that our students receive great benefit from in feeling engaged in their community. Um, we want to acknowledge that the conversation is a difficult one for all of us. Um, we want to make sure that we, we know we're not an expert, but we also want to be able to share that with our young people, that we don't have all the answers, but we are here to talk and help them process. We are able to give permission to ourselves to be human um, and to know that, that all of us make mistakes, children, adults, and that we are uh, allow ourselves to be a little bit vulnerable on that moment. It's common to feel uncomfortable with this topic, even if you've had the conversation with others before and are skilled in it. It's still an uncomfortable uh, conversation, and it's okay to recognize that uh, with yourself and with the people that you're talking to. We want to talk to a supportive person beforehand and debrief after to make sure that that we are giving ourselves time to process the conversation that happened and reflect on that and be able to discuss it and find out if I need to have uh, further conversations or I need to revisit certain items that uh, I may or may not feel resolution with. Um, but most importantly, uh, it's important, most importantly, we never keep what we learn a secret. And this is something that we share with students time and time again. Um, that our friends are going to uh, take the information and if they are worried, they will continue to uh, seek help and, and talk to someone and talk to someone else until there's a person that says, I'm, come, I'm going with you and we're going to find what help is needed. Um, and that we openly tell our friends 
and our peers that uh, this is not a secret that I can keep. This conversation is not a secret that we will keep. One of the things that we do in health and PE at all times is to uh, build the protective factors within our adolescents. Those things that are seen here are the same things that help develop a healthy lifestyle. Um, some students thrive during distance learning because they are able to focus on, on the task at hand. And others, including uh, us as teachers, struggled without their favorite sports, activities, and access to trusted adults. So us as parents are encouraged to work with their children to figure out what ways that we can stay connected um, in what is still an evolving return to school and community and involvement in extracurricular activities. So we do want to encourage connection to school, participating in activities and strong connections to friends. Uh, this is done most commonly through peer groups and friend groups at school, but also through clubs and opportunities to get involved, uh, whether it be extracurriculars or uh, intramural or competitive athletics. We want to let our child know that we are always ready to listen, whether they are concerned about a friend or struggling themselves. They do not need to worry alone. Um, so I know we're going to discuss this a little bit further, um, but it is not uncommon for teenagers to sleep a lot. Their bodies are developing and they need a lot of rest. Um, we, we saw a lot of this through virtual learning with COVID. Uh, students, almost every student disengaged from their friend groups, and many of them slept a lot. Um, and as parents, it, most of us were keyed in on a change, and we began to have discussions with our students, say, hey, is, is everything okay? I've noticed a distinct change. Um, and they were probably willing to talk to us and say, this is really hard and I'm really tired a lot, but I'm okay. Uh, but those were also those of us that said, I'm not doing well with this and I think I need help. Um, and so one of the things that we look at building protective factors is giving them opportunities to stay engaged and have other people to talk to if they need it. Uh, but they, these healthy factors also affect our hormone systems and our body systems that, that help us to feel better regulated at times and uh, feel a little bit better with where we are in our place in the world. We are gonna wanna, and that's hopefully a good segue for some of the things that we're gonna learn from Caitlin about um, how to talk to our team and exactly what we can do to support them. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I am Caitlin Priest with Himrico Area Mental Health and Developmental Services. Um, so talking to your team, um, an important part of having your teenager know that they can talk to you about mental health is you being willing and open to talking with them about it. Um, <clears throat> so it's helpful to normalize the conversation because feelings of depression or anxiety may um, be hidden. Uh, depression is not a character flaw, but it is a um, treatable condition. I didn't realize I had to click through all this. Um, so asking about suicide. Sometimes we struggle with the actual words, um, when, what to say when it comes to talking about suicide. So rest assured that asking someone about suicide is not going to put the idea in their head. Instead, it lets them know that you can see how much pain they're in and that you want to help. If you are concerned that your child might be thinking about suicide, you can indirectly ask something like, do you ever wish that you were dead? Or you can ask something directly, um, which would be more like, have you thought about killing yourself or have you th had thoughts about suicide? This is a difficult conversation no matter what. If it's too difficult to have this conversation alone, try and find some help. That might be another parent, a relative, your school counselor, your pediatrician, or even calling um, the national helpline to have help in speaking with your child. So some tips on how to get teens to talk. Um, that might be allowing a family led or a teen led family meeting um, so that they can set the agenda of what they would like to discuss in that meeting um, and how they would like the meeting to to be conducted. Um, playing a game can be a really helpful thing. Um, 
having something to do with your hands and focus on while having some difficult conversations. Um, a wonderful one is taking a drive, um, especially because you don't have to have that like awkward eye contact if it feels uncomfortable and you can just be focusing on driving forward um, and, and talking about um, whatever your thoughts are or concerns are. Um, and then another one can be having the conversation in multiple mini conversations. Maybe you bring it up and you don't feel as though it has gone well in that first one. You, you might try and bring it up again in the future um, in a different way. So I will pass it back over to Nicole. All right, some action steps for parents to keep in mind um, include looking out for warning signs and seeking help immediately. Helping to build coping skills and positive supports for your child and talking to your child about suicide and being ready to listen when your child acts. While parents and guardians play an important role, they are not alone in their fight to prevent youth suicide. Our schools and communities must work together to support our students. This graph is a visual representation of the top two leading causes of death of teens. As you can see, over the past 15 years, our nation has dramatically reduced the number of teens dying in car accidents. And how do we do it? Safer cars, safer roads, increased driver's ed, strict licensing requirements for teens, increased drinking and driving laws, uh, next texting uh, while driving hands-free laws, and reduced speed limits. Now think about all the things we can do as trusted adults, whether it's parents, teachers, and school staff, to prevent suicide. At the top of this list is ensuring that parents and school-based mental health staff are partnering to keep our kids safe. If you're concerned about a child, please know that your school-based mental health team is here to support you and reach out to your child's school counselor or any staff member with which you feel most comfortable. Additionally, parents and guardians can access signsofsuicide.org backslash parent to learn more about youth suicide prevention, sample SOS student videos, and access online mental health screening and more. So this is where our um, school-based school mental health team members are using the lessons from signs of suicide um, for both middle and high school. Remember, if your child is showing any concerning signs, it's important to act, acknowledge, that you're seeing signs of suicide in your child, show your child that you care and make sure that you touch base with a professional for extra support and guidance. So in order to help you locate a professional you are comfortable with in Henrico County Public Schools, we've posted a directory of all of our Henrico County school-based mental health providers listed by school on the HCPS school mental health webpage included here. You can also locate this and more information at any time by scanning the QR code that's provided here. And then we have the website listed along the bottom as well. So a great resource for mental health services in the area is Henrico Area Mental Health and Developmental Services. Um, in order to um, come in to request outpatient therapy services, you can call um, our intake line, which is that 727-8515 number. Um, in the case of an emergency, this might be um, 24 hours a day, even in after hours, you can call 804-727-8484. Another great resource because um, while our emergency services can assist you in navigating, um, getting connected to other services, if you have concerns, um, the Region 4 Mobile Crisis Line will help you actually get connected with um, crisis clinicians. Um, and that number is the 833-968-1800. And now we also have our um, National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which is 988, which is a great number that even, um, make sure our, our teens have so that they can call it if they have any concerns um, about themselves or others.
So thank you so much to all of you for joining us this evening. As a school community, we all play an important role in youth suicide prevention, and together we can work to support our children throughout the Henrico community, ensure that every student has a trusted adult to turn to. So again, if you scan this code here, you will be able to access a larger list of community resources.